A couple months ago, the homemade trading card game Discord server had their first community game jam. What's that? A game jam is a challenge where there's a theme and you need to make a game that somehow ties into that theme under a severe time constraint, usually just a day or two. You don't need to make a fully realized finished game, just a proof of concept that's playable. Our game jam was quite a bit longer at two weeks, and we had a poll to decide the theme between stack, flip, and fuse. With an overwhelming majority, the Fuse theme was selected, and the game jam had begun. This was my attempt to make a TCG in two weeks. The first thing on my mind was, what am I fusing? And immediately I had two contenders, either a horrible eldritch monster straight out of HP Lovecraft, or Transformers, Power Rangers, combining robots, baby. I think sci-fi is a little underutilized in card games, so let's go with that one. Great, I have a theme. That doesn't actually get me anywhere besides a picture. I need some gameplay. Not long before the game jam, I got to play a game that had a really cool system that I had never seen before. So maybe I could take some hints from the Warhammer collectible card game from 2001. Yeah, I dug pretty deep here. Maybe I'll make a video explaining that game someday. But for now, let's talk about Super Fighting Force Compositrons. Also, as an additional challenge, <laughs> Sorry about that. As an additional challenge, I wanted to make this game playable with one pack per player from the Game Crafter, which is a print-on-demand service that can fit 18 cards in one booster pack. With that constraint in mind, let's get to it. This universe is about robots fighting for control of the solar system, or the galaxy, or maybe even the universe. But let's have the game be a battle for control over one planet. Planets usually have a bunch of different stuff on them, so we're gonna have three different battlefields per planet. Whoever controls more battlefields at the end of some number of turns is going to gain control of the planet and send the losers back to space. We have our win condition. You gain control of these battlefields by using units. Dang old robots, they got three stats. Armor to show how much damage it can take, power to show how much damage it can deal when it's attacking, and speed to determine what can defend or be defended by this unit. Oh, and of course an effect text box. We're gonna need some art too, so let's just uh, use Google images of some well-known robots. Uh, don't worry, we'll fix this later. Now this is where the fuse theme comes back in. We want to be able to fuse two units into a compositron, so let's add a second text box that activates when they combine, kind of like the Digimon Evolution Source text box. We could also also add additional armor that the lower unit provides when a compositron is formed, like when Jetfire combines with Optimus Prime and then puts a bunch of extra stuff on him. We could still make it a little more interesting though. What if units only got their second effect if they're in a specific position of the combination? Like what if we had these arrows that need to point to something in order to get the effect? Like here, both the arrows point to something so we get both of the extra effects, but here we only get the top unit's second effect because it points points to something and the other one points down. Let's throw it on there, we could always erase it if it doesn't work. So now we have the thing you're fighting over and the things by which to get the things you're fighting over. But how do you do it though? First decide who goes first, however you want. Roll a die, flip a Taco Bell sauce, or see who can play the intro to Through the Fire and Flames on Guitar Hero 3 better. The player that goes first is going to be the first active player. Take their three battlefield cards and put them on the board sideways. The order doesn't matter. Other than the battlefield cards, both players have a deck of 15 units where you can have two copies of any unit. Yep, just units. Other types of cards are for suckers! Then, the active player is going to start the recon phase, which is just flipping the top card of your deck and putting it into one of the battlefields. The battlefields are basically their own separate lanes that don't cross over unless a unit specifically says it can go to other battlefields. After the active player sends their recon soldier out, the other player does the same thing. This gives you a little bit of a known factor of what the other player is going to have for their turn. Next is the deployment phase. Both players draw four cards, and then starting with the active player, alternate placing units face down to any of the battlefields. You can see where your opponent is building up, but you can't see what they're building up. 
After there are no more cards in any hands, we move to the non-active player, who is essentially the defender, and they pick a battlefield to fight over. They have to pick a battlefield where they actually have units though, it would be kind of weird if they just chose to fight over somewhere they have no presence in. Once a battlefield is chosen, the other battlefields and units at them are ignored until the current battle is completed. All units at the chosen battlefield are flipped face up. Starting with the active player, they can combine or detach any units on the battlefield, which is to form compositrons or split compositrons back into two units. To take control of a battlefield, you have to have the most compositrons, because they're big and strong. So you should probably make at least one, unless your goal isn't to take control of a battlefield right now. Now it's time for the battle phase. Starting with the active player, players will take actions back and forth until either both players pass or no more actions can be taken. When it's your chance to move, you can do any of the following actions. Attacking is the most involved of these, so let's go over that one first. I also put it first, so that's probably a good reason too. To declare an attack, switch one of your units from active to inactive mode. Very innovate, much new mechanic and declare the target. The target can be any of your opponent's units. Then your opponent can block the attack, but only if the blocking unit has higher speed than the attacker. Not equal, higher. If you do block, switch the blocker from active to inactive as well. Then the attacker does damage equal to its power to the defender. Damage in this game is persistent, so you must track it with little marbles or dice or damage counters that you stole from your friend. I don't think I would make a game with persistent health normally, so I decided to here in the jam because, you know, why not? If a unit has more damage on it than it has armor, it is junked and sent to the junkyard. Compositrons take damage a little differently, though. They take damage to their lower unit first, and if they take more damage than they have combo armor or the second armor, the lower unit of the compositron is junked, and any remaining damage is applied to the top unit, which is no longer considered a compositron. And that's attacking. The other actions are pretty simple. Using an action means you just look at a unit's effect and do what it says. Combine takes two units and forms a compositron out of them. They keep any damage on them, and if either unit is in inactive mode, the compositron enters in inactive mode as well. Similarly, detaching is taking a compositron and separating them back into two units. If the compositron is in active mode, both units also enter in active mode. If the compositron is inactive, so are the units after detaching. Passing is doing nothing. Why did I put this in the script? There are also reactions, which are kind of free actions that you can take whenever a certain condition is met. Whoever is not taking the current action has the first chance to use a reaction. Reactions go back and forth until both players are done. Once both players pass in a row, the battle is over and the player with more compositrons is the winner of the battle. Rotate the battlefield card to face that player. If the number of compositrons is the same, no one wins the battle and the battlefield does not rotate. I said it doesn't rotate. Now, the second battle of the turn begins where the active player, the one that didn't pick the first battle, gets to pick a new battlefield to fight over, but not the one that was just fought over. Flip the cards, make compositrons, and do the battle phase over again with the non-active player combining or detaching before the battle first, as well as taking the first move. It's basically the same thing, but the other person gets to do stuff first. When the second battle is over, a new turn starts back at the recon phase. After three turns, the player that controls the most battlefields wins the game. Whew. And that's what I started with. A lot of it was pulled from the old Warhammer game, but several mechanics were also changed or in some cases removed, so it was time to play test it out and see how it goes. I threw together a single deck and did a one-player mirror match against myself and immediately noticed something was wrong. Despite being a persistent health game, I gave almost every unit two defense and two power, so everything was getting one shot. Whoops. There was also originally no second battle ever every turn, so the whole game was three battles, which was a terrible idea because the first player could just go all in on one location. The other player, well, it didn't matter what they did because they only got to choose one battle, so if you didn't also all in the same location, you could only possibly ever win the second battle while the first player just drops all their stuff at the third location, which they will win on their second battle and win the game. Putting entirely too much power on the first player and making the only way to play the game to stack everything in one location. After Fixing that ginormous pothole, I played a couple games with my friends and the game loop seemed to be going pretty well. The fusing was integral to the game and was an interesting
interesting decision on choosing what to combine and when to do it. A couple cards had some really lackluster effects though, so they'd need some improving. But I think it was about time to make a second deck, the bad guy deck. In my three seconds of lore brainstorming, I had made just two faction names, the Positrons and the Dividroids. So now I need to figure out what that means from a gameplay perspective. The Positrons are the good guys, so they should have powerful effects when they combine and be able to recombine with the power of teamwork. The Divide Droids are the bad guys, so maybe they have low combo armor, but they do things when they get junked. That seems like a bad guy thing to do, so let me just whip that up real quick, and... The first draft of them was really bad. They mostly had really bad stats because I overestimated the junk effects. I also made a guy with a scry type effect where you looked at the next six cards of your deck and let you put them on the top or the bottom. But if you didn't play this guy on turn one, it was basically useless since you use your whole deck in three turns. Of course that wasn't going to work. Get him out of here. Another round of playtesting goes by and the divide droids are still not pulling any weight, even with buffed attack numbers. I think I made my range of values for power and armor too small. Everything basically had two or three armor and one to two power. So I decided to double all the armor stats and add one to all the power stats. This basically made my levers for stats go further in each direction. Now instead of everything being 1 to 3, I had 1 to 6 which gave me a lot more room for tweaking. After updating all the cards from this change, the game was more or less kind of solid. Maybe the divide roids are still a bit weak, but the time was running out and at this point I still wanted the cards to look like, well not this, so I decided to focus on that. I grabbed a friend with a mid journey AI subscription and we threw what I had so far into an AI blender to see if we could get a new friend. Frame. The results were not good. I had an idea though, to put the texture that I had used on the card back on the card front to see if that helped at all. Oh wow, look at that beauty. Eventually, after many failures, it gave us this. Okay, that might be workable. Then I had the same friend handhold me through some Photoshop basics that I didn't record to turn this into this feeling kind of powerful now. Next, we just generated a bunch of robots for the card art since this is a short notice game jam and I am no artist. I like this guy, he's on a hoverboard. Then a little more cleanup on the frame and polishing some phrases into some more thematic words like main compositor and support compositor for the units that make up a compositron. Take all this and throw it in a crappy rule book that actually has a couple terrible mistakes in it and BOOM! Super Fighting Force Compositrons was ready to be judged for the game jam. And it did pretty well actually. I won best gameplay. I was worried that the game loop would be hard to pick up and there was a one hour time limit for the judging. They went over the time slightly, but thought the combining was a sick mechanic, which makes me happy because that's the main mechanic that I actually devised and didn't just steal from a 20 year old game that basically nobody knew about. I did change quite a bit up from Warhammer, but the bones about fighting over battlefields, the unit stats, and alternating actions were pretty much directly lifted. This is why you should explore the genre and play as many games as you can. You might find a hidden gem that's basically lost knowledge at this point. Game mechanics are basically free to yoink and use in your own games, so don't be worried about making something completely original that has never been done before, and just worry about making something fun. Unless you're making another god dang Force of Will clone. So what do I do with Compositrons now? If I kept working on it, what would I do? I think as a casual buy a pack and play sealed game, it might be kind of fun. But the big worry is that the game is too deterministic. Once a battle starts, there are no more hidden factors and there's theoretically a correct way to play out every battle. Warhammer solved this issue by making every unit double as a spell in an upside down text box at the bottom of the card. And once a battle started, you drew a second hand of cards cards that were discarded at the end of the battle. They also had a dice roll mechanic where some cards wanted you to roll. So you know what you did? If you said, roll a die, you would be wrong. You discard the top card of your deck and look at the die on that card. Obviously. Compositrons just doesn't have these variance factors that Warhammer had. To really know if this is bad or not, I'd probably have to play test a bunch. Who wants to do that? Playing games? Shoot. I thought about cleaning it up, getting an actual artist to do a better frame, and maybe mass commission some sketchy art style robots and then throw it on the game crafter. I don't know, I still might. I've been two lanes, the card game Crip Man, and this is how I tried to make a TCG in two weeks. What did you think of it? Have you ever done a game jam before? Let me know in the comments. I'm out.